Hello, I'm Heather Dixon and I'm spending a couple of days up in northern Vermont. So I thought while I'm here in these beautiful surroundings, I'll film a little how-to video. So today I'm going to show you how to do the cable cast on. So for the cable cast on, I'm using um, actually some really nice yarn. It's Jade Sapphire Relux, which is 100% recycled cashmere. So that's uh, old cashmere sweaters that have been chopped up and then uh, made into yarn. So you're getting 100% cashmere. It's rather lovely. I'm excited to use it. And I have um, a circular needle. You don't need a circular needle. It's just what I have uh, with me. And uh, for this, it recommends um, US uh, 10 and a half needle. So um, I have my 10 and a half circular here, uh, which is uh, 6.5 millimeter. So to begin, to get the end of your yarn and make a slip knot. Um, now, when you become more advanced, you can um, cast on without a slip knot. But when you're a beginner, or if the yarn is slippery, or if you just don't want to have to keep hold of it for a while, uh, make a slip knot. So I make a slip knot by wrapping the yarn around two fingers, and then the long end goes through that loop, and you made a slip knot. So I'll do that again. Wrap it around two fingers. The long end goes behind and through that loop you just made. Ba bam, slip knot. So I'm going to put that on one of my needle tips. And then, so cable cast on. So I want to make sure that uh, there's plenty of room inside of that slip knot for my needle to slip in and out. So we go in behind the front leg. So these are this loop is sitting on uh, my needle, like front leg, back leg. So we go from um, the left of the front leg in between its legs and behind that left hand needle. So right hand needle goes behind left hand needle and sort of makes a nice cross. And then take your long end of your yarn, which is the working end, this is the tail end, this is the working end, and we're going to go behind both needles and then between both needles. And then the right hand needle comes out the way it went in and picks up that new stitch and then we're going to put that new stitch directly on the left hand needle and now all the rest of the time I'm going to put my right hand needle between the stitches instead of between the legs of the stitch. The reason I didn't do that with the first one is because there was only one stitch so there was nothing to put it between apart from its legs. So between the stitches, round, behind, between and pick up that loop and put it on and that's how you do the cable cast on. It's very easy and one of the things I love about the cable cast on is that you don't have to calculate how much yarn you need to do the cast on. For the long tail cast on you need to pull out a long bit of yarn. For the cable cast on you just need a little bit of yarn and then the rest of the, your working yarn can be used. You can cast on this whole ball. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to cast on a few stitches here very very easy it's just like a knitting stitch except you're going between the stitches and you're putting this yarn on to the needle okay so how many do I have now one two three four five six seven eight nine let's do ten ten and then we're ready to knit so we're looking at our stitches and the first one looks a bit strange because it hasn't got another stitch to sort of anchor it down. So that always looks like, oh, is that a mistake? No, that's not a mistake, it's right. And then the last one always looks a bit weird as well. So these two edge stitches might look a bit weird. The rest of them look nice and neat. So we're going to go in between the legs of that first stitch, just like the first stitch for casting on. Wrap the yarn around just the same way, pull that out. And then instead of pulling this forward and putting that on, we're just going to slide that stitch off. So new stitch now is on the right hand needle, old stitch is below. Here's the old stitch making a, a loop to the back, a bump to the back of the stitch. So go into the next one, knit it. And this is just the knit stitch. So all of the old stitches, the bumps are going to the back. See this nice line row of bumps here. This is our old knit stitch going to the back so the top of that stitch is forming a bump and on the front of the knit stitch you get a nice V from the old stitch. So below the new stitch you get a V at the front and a bump at the back. 
And so that is our very first row of knitting. So you get this lovely line of Vs underneath the stitches on the front, or the working side, or the right side. And on the wrong side, you get a row of bumps from the old stitch. Then if I carry on knitting in exactly the same way, the bump is going to go to the back again, so then my fabric is going to have bumps on both sides. So here's the bump from the row previous, and here's the bump from this row. So you're going to end up with fabric that has bumps on both sides. And you want to make sure that everything is nice and loose. You're not struggling, you're not tugging and pulling to get those stitches off. It's very easy for a beginner to knit tightly. I like to, I like to be able to feel the skin of my finger with my thumb between the stitch. That's how loose I like it. And then it's easy for both needles to be, go in there and do what they have to do. So that is knitting. So we have our cable cast on here, nice neat cast on, and our knit bumps. Lining up. So between each row of bumps you have a row of V's. So I'll do one more. And that's it. This yarn is knitting beautifully. It feels good. It feels nice and soft. So there you go. Cable cast on with a little bit of knitting.